Parable of the Good Samaritan, Chapter 1. This road can be a weird one to travel. Sometimes it's easy, like Sunday morning. Then other times it's downright treacherous. For some of us, this road might not take that long to travel, over in the blink of an eye, before we even knew that we were on a journey. And then for others, it seems like an eternity. But whatever the case, it takes a lifetime to travel this road. But it's a road that we all must travel from Jerusalem to Jericho. There isn't a soul on this planet who doesn't have to travel this road. So when I set out, I'm overcome with a sense of emotion, a lot of them, all scrambled together inside of me. Excitement, but dread, all at the same time. I know that some of this journey is going to be enjoyable. It's going to be fun. But then other parts are going to be difficult. There's going to be suffering. It's going to be trying. And still others are actually going to be fraught with danger. Because I've heard there's actually bandits on this road, and the rumors are probably true, because of course there's bandits on this road. No road is completely safe. Every single road has its own perils that we have to look out for. But bandits are not. I'll walk this road. I must walk this road. I have to get from Jerusalem to Jericho, just like everyone else. So my eyes will be opened. And yes, I'll take in the sights. Of course I will. I'll try and enjoy as much of this journey as I possibly can, but I'll be cautious as well because I don't want to be taken by surprise by anything that might want to actually do me harm. But then there's a question that has to be asked. What will I do if I actually come across one of these groups of thieves, these bandits, these bad guys? I'm not really sure. I guess I'll just have to wait and see. But the one thing I am sure about is that if I happen to come across anybody else who has already been assaulted by one of these groups of bad guys, these bandits, then I'll do what I have to do to help them. Because that's the good and decent and right thing to do. That's what my parents taught me. And my parents were taught this by God himself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. So that's what I'll do. That's what I'm called to do. I'll love my neighbor as myself. But then a second question comes to mind. What if I don't recognize this guy? What if he isn't my literal neighbor? What then? Well, I suppose I'll have to stop and do what's necessary. Because I don't get to choose who my neighbor is. My neighbor is the guy standing in front of me, especially if that guy is in need. But then a third question comes up. What if this somebody, this guy, is somebody that I don't like? Someone I despise? have no respect for, can't stand. What if he's like a Samaritan? That's when it gets a little bit more difficult. But the Lord, he's commanded me to help him, even him, even if he is a dirty, rotten, sinful, unworthy Samaritan. So I'll help him. Surely I'll help him. I'll probably help him. Maybe I'll help him. I'd like to think that I'd help him. I guess it just depends on the situation. Thanks for watching Higher Things video shorts. Remember to like, subscribe for notifications, and donate to support Higher Things at higherthings.org slash giving. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.